My name is Abby Edgecombe. I am the SKIP coordinator for Lincoln Lancaster County. SKIP stands for School Community Intervention and Prevention, and we work with schools all across Nebraska to help support student mental and behavioral health. We do that through a process of early identification, intervention, prevention, and education. Um, today we are here to talk about some of the substance use trends that we are seeing in youth, particularly um, some of the various modes of use that kids uh, and teenagers might be using, as well as some of the paraphernalia um, as a way to hopefully educate parents and other youth advocates to be more aware of what is going on in the lives uh, of the youth around them. I am joined today with Officer Andre O'Connor, who's going to um, be providing us with some additional information as we move forward. Hi, I'm Andre O'Connor. I'm a police officer with the Lincoln Police Department. I've been a police officer for eight years now, a little over eight years. I'm also a certified drug recognition expert, um, one of approximately 90 in the state of Nebraska. Um, I received my certification in drug recognition uh, in 2014, and I was certified as a drug recognition expert instructor in 2017. I'm currently one of 13 instructors within the state and one of 13 drug recognition experts here in Lancaster County between the Sheriff's Office and the Police Department. Pretty much what my job is, is um, we've all seen, if you will, on cops or police TV shows, officers perform standardized field sobriety tests on the street, which would be the walk and turn, or you see a subject or participant uh, standing on one leg. And that's usually predominantly for alcohol enforcement, but the 13 of us within the Lancaster County, we get called in if the individual is determined to be under the influence of something other than alcohol is then when we come in and we identify if the person's under the influence of a controlled substance and based on our evaluation our 12-step process we're able to identify the respective drug category a person is under the influence of and today i will be identifying um, predominantly one category cannabis and certain signs and symptoms that i would help you guys at home um, identify if your student or your child is under the influence of that respective drug category. The drug culture has really evolved and changed over the last several decades, so it's becoming more difficult for parents and educators and other youth advocates to recognize the many different drug references that are out there, whether it's in social media, music, clothing, um, artwork that kids are engaging with. It's really important for us as adults in the world of youth to stay educated and become aware of what some of that looks like and what some of those drug references mean. Um, drugs don't look a certain way, so they're often disguised. So when we think of things like edible marijuana or the THC that uh, is utilized in vape devices, we may look at a product and not realize that that's actually a substance. Um, we may look at a vape pen and think, well, maybe that student is vaping nicotine or maybe they're vaping um, the flavored um, e-juice, when in reality, it could be marijuana. So as, as parents, as educators, doing our research, staying informed, having conversations with kids is really important, which is why we're here today to help raise awareness for you as educators. Um, and, and think about digging deeper when this is over, when you're done watching this. Do a quick Google search and you'll be surprised at what you can find in terms of, of those drug references. And if it's easy for you as an adult to find, it's going to be even easier for your student, for your child, for your teenager to find as well. The accessibility of substances has really changed over the years, and, and the internet has really changed that. Um, it's much easier for kids to access paraphernalia online. Um, even certain substances, I think particularly in terms of synthetics, can be purchased online, and, and Andre can talk a little bit more about that as well. But uh, uh, you'll see here there's some um, online head shops. Uh, you can do a quick Google search and there's a lot more of them out there, but it used to be you had to go to a physical location, a physical head shop to purchase the, the drug paraphernalia that you wanted. Um, and so Grass City Online Head Shop is a, is, a, is a store online. Yo Dabba Dabba, which is a play on words for dabbing for marijuana. Um, and so that particular store specializes in dab accessories, which we're going to talk more about to inform you. Um, there's no age verification on these websites. A lot of times kids can use a prepaid visa card. And so even if uh, a, 
you'll get a pop-up screen that says, are you 21 years of age? And you click yes, and you're allowed into that, that online shop, um, and no questions asked. We're going to show you some um, various paraphernalia today, and all of it I purchased on these online head shops, and it was very easy for me to do so. Um, YouTube. Uh, a quick YouTube search on how to use the products and kids can figure out how to vape marijuana, how to use specific um, pipes or tools or dab rigs. So we'll talk about that as well. But Cannabis 101, Hash School, Make Your Own Dabs, How to Make High Grade Extracts. These are all real Google searches that I found when I was doing some of our research. In terms of selling substances, social media has really played into that. And I know Andre's going to talk some about that as we move forward. But Snapchat has become a popular platform for students to make drug deals, for them to sell products. Um, and so knowing what certain um, emojis and certain uh, drug slang words are can be really helpful as parents um, in terms of, of really recognizing when we might have a concern over a student. Another just slide to really kind of highlight how easy and accessible some of these substances are. These are this is Amazon, right? We all probably shop on Amazon every week in my situation, sometimes every day. <laughs> um, but these, you can see on, on this slide here, we've got some um, silicone containers. Those are used for marijuana wax. We have uh, some smoke odor eliminator. It's called Cannibalish. Uh, we've got another smoke eater that breaks down smoke and odor, and then we've got some smell-proof bags. And so all of those uh, were purchased or can be purchased online on Amazon. Another just website, Cannabox, um, you know, you can get all of your marijuana paraphernalia needs in one box. How convenient for kids. Um, and, and we'll talk more about some of the, those accessibility as, as we move on, and we'll show some various paraphernalia products as well. But with that, Andre is going to share with us a little information about some of the specific substances that kids are using and even what some of those substances look like and resemble. Thank you, Abby. Yes. Um, the first one I would like to, I guess, expand on and talk about is caviar moon rocks. Uh, it first started off as your normal flower or bud, um, what traditionally in the 70s and 60s we all identified as marijuana, just flower marijuana, um, which back in those days it was anywhere from 2 to 5% THC level. Um, but if you will, the drug game has evolved. Um, we are now moving, as you alluded to earlier, um, concentrates, uh, edibles. So then people are always trying to get um, higher, higher, find ways to get higher. Um, so you start off with a, just a regular flower, marijuana bud, and it's known as caviar because it's just a flower marijuana, it's typically about anywhere from 15 to 20% THC level. And then it's dipped in hash oil, which is marijuana concentrate, and then it's rolled in pure THC. So the marijuana concentrate, the oil, if you will, is anywhere from 30 to sometimes 90% THC level, and then it's dipped in pure keef, which is pure tobacco, I mean, pure cannabis. Um, so you're looking at potentially the total of over 90% pure marijuana THC, um, sometimes even close to 99% um, THC con concentrate. So it just takes a very little amount of this to get high. Um, on the streets, common sell or selling is anywhere from 60 to $100 a gram. And then for an ounce of this stuff is selling for about $1,400 an ounce. Um, so this stuff is very popular. I know some dispensaries as of last year um, was once they get it in the store, it was sold out within that same day. So it is tough to see. But if you see something like this in, in schools or inside your, your kids' vehicles and it's just rolled like a nugget, um, look into it because it more likely it's, it's going to be marijuana concentrate. So Kratom, we started seeing it here in Nebraska a few years back, um, is commonly sold in smoke shops and head shops um, throughout Nebraska. You can also find it in some gas stations. It originated from Southeast Asia um, and it's known as herbal painkiller. Picture it back in the day when we used to go to gas stations and we see these vitamin packs right there at the cat near the cash register. Um, if you take low dose of the amount of it, it works as a stimulant. It's supposed to give you energy. However, unfortunately, some users have found that if you take a certain or respective dose to that user, it would actually get them high. 
and it works the complete opposite effect and it actually works as a narcotic. So you're exhibiting some of the same signs and symptoms of a narcotic. Um, some of the ways that it can be used, it comes of a, a leaf and it's crushed and it could be smoked, brewed in a tea, or found in a capsule form capsule form and that is the most common form is a capsule form that you will see so if you're seeing these green capsules as we have identified or pictured here in the photo um, that's the most common one so if you're seeing it in your students or in the schools um, that's the most common one that is sold around here in town or in the midwest it almost looks like a vitamin supplement if a parent were to come across it i think of back in the day we, we they made echinacea um, that looked very similar to that Absolutely. And, it, you know, it's based on the totality of everything. So if your kid is not or your student is not taking vitamins and you're not aware of anyone taking vitamins and you're starting to find these in their position or possession or in their vehicle, you should probably start having a uh, talk or asking, some, asking them some questions. So Kratom, as I mentioned earlier, if you take low dose, it works as a stimulant. It's supposed to be give you a boost of energy, but if you take high doses of it, um, it will actually work as an opioid or a, a narcotic. And if you will, what kind of a dose is respective to the user. So I may have to take six to feel that high, or you may have to take three. I can't give you a set number. It's just they take it until they feel that they're um, starting to feel the effects of a narcotic. Uh, the DEA actually has labeled this or Kratom as a chemical or drug and chemical of concern recently. And unfortunately right now, probation officers and parole officers are unable to test for it. So in the blood or in the urine, we're not able to identify if Kratom is testing positive. So. And is there any legal issue surrounding it if somebody has it in their possession? Um, currently, actually, six states in the United States have identified it as illegal. So it's illegal to possess it, sell it, or consume it. Um, but unfortunately, in Nebraska, it is legal right now. Um, the only regulation is you have to be 18 years old to purchase it. Gotcha. So, um, are, are we seeing that in Lincoln? Are there stores that are selling it here in Lincoln? Yes, absolutely, that you asked. I actually just came across it this past weekend. I identified two different stores within my beat area in the northwest section of Lincoln. Um, the first one is going to be near um, 11th and Cornhusker. I found it, there's Kratom's, and they, they're they promoting it. It's out there and they, they want people to know that they are selling it. And the second one's gonna be off of 33rd and Cornhusker. Right here in the Common Strip Mall, they're selling Kratom. And I've seen these at various other locations in Center Team Lincoln and also in Southwest Lincoln, I've seen it as well. But just recently, this past weekend, I saw two different signs um, selling Kratom. And I think we should be clear for parents as well and, and for, for any other educator or youth advocate that's listening to this, just because it is legal in Lincoln doesn't mean it's safe. And I think we see that with a lot of other substances as well. And so just because it may be deemed legal does not mean it's safe for our youth to take and just. Absolutely. And yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned that just because it is legal. Um, if you take anything that may be even sold over the counter, if they consume it and their intentions are to get high is dangerous and we should be uh, concerned and aware of it. So I want to discuss vape pens. Um, Originally, a vape pen started as a nicotine vape pen for people uh, when originally it was 18 years or older to, to consume tobacco. Now, recently, in 2019, it switched mm -hmm. to 21 years or older you have to be to consume tobacco. Um, so going into marijuana concentrate pens, the whole purpose behind it is to be discreet. As you are walking in public or driving a vehicle, common people think, oh, it's just a tobacco pen. Mm -hmm. However, they're trying to conceal it or hide it and smoke their cannabis or THC concentrate out of it. So the common mar uh, marijuana vape pen is about 90 hits or 90 inhales, plus or minus 10 to the respective user. It still puts off the odor of marijuana. So if you are finding these and they are smoking it, if you're in a close proximity, you will still smell or detect the odor of marijuana coming from it. So that is different than obviously nicotine. Um, just, I have a folder down here. This is actually a coil. This is a heat source that is used to consume the concentrate. It needs a high level of heat source to actually um, 
be able to consume the concentrate. So if you are finding multiple coils inside your the vehicle, your son's possession or daughter's possession or in schools, that's only used to consume concentrates because nicotine, as you know, it just needs any heat source because you can smoke nicotine regularly. So these coils will break because of such a high level of heat that if you're having spares, it should be a red flag or indicator. Hey, they may be using it to consume something other than nicotine. Um, also a dabbing tool, we'll touch base with this here in the next slides, but a dabbing tool has no um, business, if you will, for uh, nicotine. It's strictly used to consume concentrates, predominantly wax or uh, concentrate. Abby, so a common question I've been asked in, in the past is, how do you identify the difference between a nicotine vape pen and also a marijuana concentrate pen? Mm -hmm. And you know, to be honest with you, a lot of police officers have a difficult time um, identifying those as well. And I will tell you the very easy and co most common way to identify it is the cartridge. Identifying the cartridge of the nicotine or vape or the marijuana concentrate pen will be a good, easy clue. And I've identified between oil or water and syrup. Um, that being, if it's a nicotine cartridge, if you flip it upside down, it should be consistent with flipping upside down a water bottle. It would just should flow smoothly, and a marijuana concentrate pen would be consistent with uh, syrup. So remember on a Sunday morning breakfast at your grandma's house, flipping the syrup container for pancakes, if it flows smooth or slowly, and it has that, that oil or that syrup-like substance, that's how you identify. The, the easiest way to identify it is water and syrup flowing of the cartridge. Gotcha. I want you guys to focus on the brands. Um, the brands is the biggest per point to identifying a marijuana concentrate pen. The most common ones we see, if you will, the, the Cadillac of them all is going to be a G-Pen. Those are the most expensive ones. If you type in G-Pen on Google search, your common Google search, it will always be associated with marijuana concentrates. Mm -hmm. um, another common one that we've seen is the Evolve Plus and Evolve. Those are the most common ones I've seen on the street. Also, the thing I want to identify is your common nicotine pen usually costs about 10 to $20. And that's because of the heat source and the type of the qual quality of the pen. It's just cheap, it's just used to smoke tobacco. But your higher concentrate ones are about 50 to even, I wrote 90, but some are pushing over $100. So there's no reason to spend that much money unless it's used to ingest concentrates. So ask, ask questions, ask your students or your ch children question, um, or if they say, you know, they spent quite a bit of money for it, it should also be another red flag. And here I have a G pen or a, a G pen set up and you have S Snoop Dogg on the side. Um, and then you have a dabbing tool, as I mentioned, and then also kind of like the silicone containers will, would consume your, uh, your concentrate, your wax. And then some Q-tips is to clean out your vape pen. You don't need to clean out a nicotine pen. They're doing that to clean out their marijuana concentrate pen. And so some of these other tools are used to, to clean out the pen. So parents or educators might not necessarily just look for the device itself, but some of the extra paraphernalia and the extra tools and the extra supplies that go along with it could be a tip off. Absolutely. That's absolutely correct. So if you're seeing different things, dabbing tools, coils, Q-tips, anything to clean um, the device, it should be another clue. So as I mentioned, uh, tobacco being consistent with water and also mm -hmm. marijuana concentrate consistent with syrup, here's a side to kind of indicate that. You have your common tobacco cartridge that's supposed to go in a nicotine pen, more consistency of water base if you were to flip it upside down, back and forth. And here you have some marijuana concentrate pens or, or cartridges, that consistency of a syrup. So if you were to identify the cartridge and then flip it upside and down, you'll, you'll be able to de determine the flow of it will be more consistent with syrup. I want to bring to your attention that a lot of these cartridges do have either um, identify as marijuana or they'll have a marijuana sign or maybe something more discreet as like a bee or a honeycomb for, for wax or dabs, but not all cartridges uh, have identifying uh, uh, symbols on mm -hmm. them that are marijuana concentrates, but some of them do. Now, can some of the cartridges be used for both nicotine and marijuana concentrates? Are they versatile? Um, so the respective cartridge, once they are, are sold, it only has one purpose. Mm -hmm. However, with that being said, some pens can be changed back and forth to be used, but that's predominantly seen for a marijuana concentrate pen, we'll have tobacco or nicotine smoked out of it. But if you're spending the money 
for um, a high quality uh, pen to use to consume concentrates, you're only smoking concentrates out of there. I'm not gonna say always, because you never wanna say always, but the vast majority of time, um, they're used to smoke concentrates. Okay. So kingpin cartridges, these are actually some cartridges I've uh, seized during a traffic stop. These are coming straight out of uh, Colorado from a, a smoke shop or dispensary in Colorado. And these are very common, as you identify here, 710. You probably are very familiar with 710, mm -hmm. but 710, if you flip upside down, it, it, it spells the word oil. So it's marijuana oil, concentrate. So some of the times they try to be discreet, but um, as Abby alluded to earlier, some of the details or some of the indicators are inside the wor wording or the photos of them. If you look at here at the king, for a kingpin, if you see his eyes are red. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, if you smoke marijuana, you get bloodshot, watery eyes. So his eyyes are red. You identified the 710 is oil flips upside down, which is also July 10th. So July 10th is usually a universal day to, to consume marijuana concentrates. Um, historically 420 to consume marijuana, but now July 10th has been identified to a day to, a, to consume marijuana concentrates. Um, so no, another day to notate on a calendar. When it comes to identifying certain cartridges, and you guys and educators and parents at home, the easiest way to do it is just do a quick Google search. If you throw in the name brand or throw in the brand of the nicotine pen or the vape pen into Google, majority of the time, I'm gonna say, I can't, oh, I'm not gonna say always, but majority of the time they'll give you um, things underneath the Google search that will relate to either if it's a nicotine or a marijuana concentrate pen. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the last or previous slide, we type, we use Kingpin. So I did a quick Google shirt search for kingpin cartridges and the first thing that pops up is um, you must be 21 years or older to visit the site and it has a marijuana leaf that should be a huge clue mm -hmm. as tied to marijuana it's right. going to be a marijuana concentrate um, and you have the 710 and you have the 710 which as identified as oils and then a couple other things on here is yeah you have a whole setup on rig so it has videos too so if you're not one that likes to do a lot of reading just click on the the images or videos link and then it'll, it'll show you images or videos consistent with what the brand is or what they're trying to achieve with that pen so another evolve evolve plus as i mentioned mm -hmm. um, this is something i actually i pulled over a traffic stop so if you like to learn off of photos you go to it i found this on ebay they're selling it and a couple of key things that they identify that if this is a nicotine or a marijuana concentrate pen here's a little m uh, symbol it says wax mm -hmm. and as there's no wax associated with nicotine so we all know that's marijuana concentrate another thing we identified is a, it's a hundred percent wax pen so it's not meant to consume any nicotine whatsoever. And then, as I mentioned the slide previous, it's $50. So you're on the low end of a concentrate pen, but it's a lot more than 10 to $20 that you would typically spend for a nicotine pen. And then the thing that I love most is there's more photos. So if you're not sure just with one, let's flip through and see what the photos have to offer. So Evolve Plus actually has hidden compartment, silicone compartment to hide your, your dabs and your concentrates inside at the bottom of it. Um, I actually found this on a traffic stop and if I didn't put on this presentation prior, I would have never uh, known that this pen actually has a hidden compartment. And this is what I found. It's the Evolve Plus and inside of it is your marijuana concentrate hidden on the, bo on the bottom of the pen. And then this is the dabbing tool with marijuana substance or concentrate substance on the dabbing tool. And I found that in the jean pocket of the individual I searched, but that jacket was not hers, so she claims. Right. So, and most nicotine cartridges do not have these hidden no, containers. No, it's for one sole purpose, mm -hmm. it's just to smoke nicotine. Right. So you're having these hidden compartments or these dabbing tools, and these are the accessories you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that are consistent with a concentrate pen. So Smoke is a very common brand for a nicotine pen, and how do we identify that here? Well, the price in it is on the mm -hmm. high end of a regular $10 to $20. So, um, and then the photos in it, as you mentioned, there's no dabbing tool, mm -hmm. there's no hidden compartments, um, there's no cleaning devices, it's just purely used. So you could come to the conclusion that this is used for nicotine. So that's the thing that I strongly encourage you guys to do if you, you're unsure, you're not aware, just on a quick Google search and then look at some photos, do some reading, and the majority of the time you'll identify if it's meant 
for uh, concentrate or if it's meant for nicotine. And the photos are pretty telling. And I want to identify the word discrete. If anything's listed as discrete on the website, they're trying to be discrete and it should be a clue that is probably going to be cannabis or a marijuana concentrate pen. G-Pen Vaporizer, and as we learned earlier, G-Pen is a Cadillac, if you will, of all the mm -hmm. um, concentrate pens. So we have G-Pen, you have Dry Herb, which is marijuana. It's also identified you'll save an extra 5% if you put in the promo code 420, which is National Pot Smoking Day. And then it's almost $90. Wow. So it just, just based off those clues, what we learned earlier, this is going to be consistent with a marijuana concentrate pen. So um, this actually could smoke dry herb. So the cannabis or the flower that you would use, you'd put it inside this pen and then the heat source would smoke. But if you're in public or you're driving down the street and someone's just smoking what appears to be a regular nicotine pen, this is actually a way to be as discreet as possible to consume regular flower cannabis or marijuana. While we're spending a lot of our uh, time today talking about marijuana concentrates and marijuana vape pens, we do want to just bring to attention to parents and to others who are invested in the lives of our youth about uh, a, tr a trend that we are seeing more of this year specifically in terms of, of vape devices, um, and that would be our disposable vapes. And so disposable vapes are not, these are not used for marijuana. Um, they are the flavored nicotine primarily, um, but they, they look in a, a couple of different ways. They come in different brands, um, but this is one that is called the Puff Bar. Um, they're used, I think they have about 300 puffs in each one of them, I believe. Um, and then they're, they're disposed of, they're thrown away. They're fairly inexpensive. Um, and this particular product is still available in the nicotine flavoring, unlike some of our electronic cigarettes, because the FDA recently banned the flavorings from the Juul and other electronic cigarettes, but that did not include our disposable um, e-cigarettes. So this is something that has been more popular with our high school kids as well as our middle school kids. And this is just another another brand. Um, we have the picture up here, um, the, posh, the posh model. Um, but again, um, very slick, small design. Um, it's disposed of when they're done using it. So we just wanted to make sure we did touch on those as well wanted to add to that um, when I'm making contact with a lot of the teens out in public the vast majority of the nicotine pens I'm coming across are the puff bars mm -hmm. and during my stint as a school resource officer I saw a lot of the puff bars in schools that were the ones being confiscated so this is a uh, very common and uh, uh, probably the most seen nicotine uh, they pen uh, right now the disposable ones would be the puff bars and we know that with the um, the disposable vapes they use nicotine salts and that's a very um, high amount of nicotine that kids are getting so we're also seeing a, a higher level of addiction to these products as well with our youth which is concerning in addition to using vape pens for marijuana concentrates we also still see the use of marijuana in just the leafy bud form. And so there's various pipes that are available out there that we are seeing with kids. Um, we have a stand, standard pipes, which are photographed here, which if you, if you came across that as a parent, that would probably raise a red flag to you and you would realize that that was used for marijuana. Um, this is one that's designed that looks more like a bracelet. Um, but again, it still looks like paraphernalia. It still looks um, like something that you would potentially question. Up at the top screen here, and I'll show you some of these, we have what are called stealth pipes. These pipes are designed to uh, be discreet so that you don't, if you, if you saw it laying around, you might not realize that it was used for marijuana. Um, so we have highlighters. Um, and, and this highlighter that I'm, I'm holding up here is, is a highlighter. It's a traditional highlighter. Um, this is a highlighter that, that looks like a highlighter. Um, but if you were to uh, undo the bottom, there is a metal pipe in the bottom. And so this is metal, this is plastic, but this is a metal, a metal pipe. Um, so that is just one example of a stealth pipe that we see. And, and I wanna to bring to your guys' attention, they do a great job of trying to disguise it. So they will actually have a highlighter that actually works. Um, and the feel of it is pretty consistent with the regular highlighter. So just be mindful if you see it and you pull it off and go, oh, okay, well, it is a highlighter. Start, you have to manipulate it. You have to take a look at it, see if things pull apart, come off, because um, drug world and um, 
hidden compartments have evolved. Mm -hmm. So we just need to take that extra time. If you find it in a book bag, you find it in a locker, or you find it um, in their bedroom, just go and I encourage you guys to do um, a thorough search or, or, you know, if you have suspicion or reason to believe that this activity is going on, is just take that extra time to manipulate the products and just make sure it truly is a highlighter. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, another example of these stealth pipes that we have is, is a lipstick container. So um, this is photographed um, in this picture over here, um, but it, it looks like a lipstick container by all um, shapes and form. But when you take the top off, it is indeed a marijuana pipe. It's tricky to get out of there sometime, but if you can see, um, this bowl. would be the little bowl, and here is where you would inhale that from. Um, so again, looks like lipstick, but designed for something completely different. Um, all of these, we've purchased all of these on online head shops, and so if it's easy for us to purchase, Kids are pretty savvy. It's yeah, easy for them to purchase. These are actually being sold here in the pet shops here in town. There's multiple. I went off to a head shop here off the 11th and Corner Husker area, and they sell, um, if you will, one hitters or certain type of paraphernalia used for consumption of other something other than nicotine. Right. So in addition to getting online, if, if you have somebody who's 18, 21, I think you have to be 21 to purchase at the head shops. Um, still can be sold and bought on the streets as well, just as any other type of substance. So we talked about dab products earlier and some of the paraphernalia that you might see with marijuana concentrates, such as the marijuana wax. Um, and, and we have some of those in front of us right now, but these are silicone containers. Um, and so they're made out of silicone so that that waxy substance doesn't stick to the inside of the container. It's often used for storage of the products, um, but they come in a variety of shapes and colors, as you can see here. Um, what they're sitting on is, is an actual, it's, it's called a dab tray. And so again, it's, it's silicone they can maneuver and um, process their marijuana wax without it sticking to the table or some other substance um, and then we have dab tools um, and, and these come in a variety of shapes but as as officer O'Connor mentioned earlier if you find these they're they're not used for any Anything. other purpose but marijuana wax and so this would be a really good tip off that this would be a concern um, if you were to find this particular product this this product is looks more like a I kind of equate it to a dental tool, but it's used to clean out clean the, yep. the, the the wax and the the substance the product. Um, so again, be aware of what these these look like. They would be a very good tip off for a parent if you were to come across any of these items. Absolutely, if you see one of them laying around, um, you should have that conversation and start looking for other pieces that go along with this. Um, as you, we talked about earlier, you just don't want to identify one thing and be like, oh, okay, jump to conclusions, but start asking questions and start looking around for other places to see if we are finding other pieces of paraphernalia consistent um, with concentrates. Right, absolutely. So street names. Yes. Let's talk about that because that can be hard for parents to understand what are our children talking about, what are our teens talking about, because they're not always going to reference it as marijuana or pot. We're going to hear something else. Yes. And that's, you know, I think that things have changed back in the day people felt that text well text message didn't exist people would have to actually call and say hey this is what i need but now texting form kids are and even adults are getting more um, cryptic or discreet in a way because law enforcement officers are able to write search warrants for certain social media accounts and also for cell phone devices so they're finding words to try to hide their common drug drug terminology in these words so first one i want to bring up is fentanyl patch if you're identifying the word patch in a conversation and it's not consistent with the text message or the conversation it should be a clue that it's mm -hmm. uh, maybe referencing drugs. Mm -hmm. Also another one is Fenty for fentanyl, but if you're seeing it in a text message through your guys' phones or your children's phones, um, or in, I don't think a lot of students do a lot of handwritten notes like we did back in the day, but either social media review or through text message conversations, they're uh, referring to potentially fentanyl, which is very common right now. And Let's talk about fentanyl just briefly because we haven't talked about fentanyl yet, just so that parents and others who are listening understand what fentanyl is and, and what we're seeing in our community with fentanyl. So fentanyl is, has taken a, it's, 
it's grown significantly and it's became extremely dangerous. Fentanyl uh, started as a medical form and actually had a use um, for medical procedures or to help people recover from surgeries. But unfortunately, the drug trade and the drug market has found a way to, to get people more high and they're mixing it with various drugs. Fentanyl or certain drugs could be laced with fentanyl and that's the most common way that people are coming across it or consuming it is if they're smoking cannabis and it's laced with fentanyl or using another drug that's laced with fentanyl, which would be your, your club rave drugs, certain stimulants or LSD or uh, pills that are also cut or laced with fentanyl. So there is um, a national crisis right now for fentanyl. We have seen it here in Lincoln. There has been some overdoses in regards to fentanyl. So it's really dangerous right now. Um, and a lot of these drugs are being cut or mixed with fentanyl. And I think that's a really important point for parents that when, when we hear students sometimes say, well, I can't die from marijuana use, I can't overdose on marijuana, we are seeing fentanyl and other types of products laced within marijuana that could be more fatal or cause overdoses. Absolutely. And, you know, um, it's unfortunate, but there are... Um, there are definitely some drugs out there that are sold on the black market or sold um, street drugs, and there's no telling. That's not regulated. There's no telling what's in some of these drugs that are sold in a dispensary in Colorado. Those are regulated. That is, or at least looked over. And um, but these ones that are being sold in the street or just by some, you know, college kids or some cartels, you have no telling what it's laced with right. or what it's made with. Right. An important conversation, I think, to include in your substance use conversation with your students, Absolutely. with kids. Absolutely. So the next thing is dextromethorphan. Um, it's very common, found in cough syrup. It's uh, it's over the counter. So as we mentioned earlier, it's something that you can legally buy if you're 18 years or older. But a lot of high school age kids and teens are using it and abusing it to get high off of. Um, co common terminology or common names, street names would be Dex or Robo, uh, drink and purple drink. They usually mix it with a Sprite or an iced tea. So they'll fill up the bottle full of a little bit of dextromethorphan or, or chorocetin and then fill the rest of it with a drink and then drink it. I can't tell you, kind of like Kratom, uh, it's respective to each individual user. Mm -hmm. So what it takes you to get high uh, from it would take potentially me to get different or high as well um, different amounts different different consumption levels syrup trip c lean and dexing are all very common things used especially when it comes to music if you're listening to music mm -hmm. I, I see it more predominantly in rap music but if you listen to rap music and they're mentioned any one of these words syrup and lean um, i'm on that lean that's strictly re uh, referencing dextromethorphan and getting high right so some other street, as I added on to these, some of these street drug names, I also threw emojis. A lot of us are texting these days or using social media apps and we're using emojis. And these emojis, it's not like the old days where MSN Messenger, you, or you throw up a heart sign or a smiley face, but these emojis have hidden messages behind them. So I'll also identify certain different, or different ones when we're talking about it. Xanax is, uh, falls under the depressant category. Um, but that is very common. It's prescription drug, but a lot of teens will be uh, prescribed to their parents. So they, teens could get a hold of it, and then this are being used or sold on the street. Common ones that we hear about are, are Zanny bars, Zan, um, or Zannies. But Zanny bars are probably the most common. And also, if you Google, as I mentioned earlier, just do a Google search of it, it will tie it back to it. But if you're looking f as far as Snapchat goes and text messages, the school bus, because you have the windows breaking up the bars. Um, also, the candy bar um, breaks up the different. A Xanax is actually identified or it has the traditional generic or traditional drug of a Xanax. It'll have different bars in it. So that's where you get the relation of the emojis. And then the, the building would be the windows for different bars. Next one is marijuana, the most probably commonly abused drug here in the Midwest and also probably in the United States. Uh, you got bud is, is flower. Mm -hmm. Green, just identify the common color of marijuana. Um, trees, so a lot of people say you want to smoke trees, so identify it. So the common emojis would be, of course, the tree, the pine tree, 
Fire is kind of a universal one, but it also is identifying the potency of it. Mm. So if something has a high potency and they get them high, they refer to it as that is fire. Like, what do you have? Well, I have that fire. So they're identifying the potency of it, mm. which would be the THC concentrate of it. The higher, if it feels that, or the seller or the user feels that it gets them really high, they will identify it as fire. Gotcha. Tell me about the coffee emoji. What does that reference? Yeah, good question. So common uh, Americans and people around the country, the first thing they do typically when they wake up is grab their cup of coffee, grab their cup of gel. It's the first thing they do out of bed is turn on a coffee pot, get ready and have a, a coffee. Um, some individuals that consume cannabis or marijuana, um, they know it as a wake and bake. The first mm -hmm. thing they do in the morning when they wake up is they bake, they smoke marijuana. So if you see the coffee reference, the coffee emoji, they're usually sending it to a friend and ask them, hey, do you want to meet up and wait or do you want to First thing you want to do prior to going to school or driving in the morning is let's meet up and smoke some weed. Okay. And the pineapple, what are we looking at there? What you're looking at there is a different strain of marijuana. Common uh, movie back in the day is Pineapple Express. Mm -hmm. So it's a strain of marijuana. So if you see that, they're trying to identify this strain they have for sale. Um, different strains out there, um, but the pineapple would be the respective strain. You also have OG Kush. Blue D, which is the Blue Dream, and then the Sour Diesel is also a very common strain of marijuana. So what they're identifying is the flavor is a strain. The flavors is a strain. And so about how many strains of marijuana do we do we see? Oh, thousands upon thousands. Too many thousands. to count. Oh, yeah. Are there certain strains that we see more of? Um, everything's identified as Kush. You could throw different Kush flavors in front of Kush, mm -hmm. but usually a Kush is the flower of it. But um, pineapple strain or... You have different cushions out there, but there's just a lot. And you go to one dispensary in Colorado to the next dispensary, and they'll have completely different strains. And that's just based off of the seeds that they use uh, to grow the plant. All right. So more street names. More street names. So concentrate, concentrated THC is your hash oil, oil, honey, dabs, wax, shatter, butter, all these are all consistent, as we mentioned, the various tools that are used to consume this. These are your concentrated THEs. Your 710, as we mentioned earlier, is just oil flipped upside down. Um, so if you're seeing all this or any of these inside a conversation or in social media, it is, especially in social media, direct messages or um, storylines if someone says that they have something like one of these words on there and it's a blank screen and it just has one of these words more than likely they're identifying that they either have drugs for sale or they're wanting drugs okay. um, edible THEs you have candy gummies and cookies cookies are your most common so if you have the cookie or the, the candy emoji shopping cart I'm looking to, to pick up some edibles um, and then also with the oil rig you have your nut and bolt consistent mm -hmm. with uh, the dab or the tools, and then the honey goes with the uh, concentrated THC. Okay, and we should note with edibles, they are ingested in a different way compared to our our leafy bud or even our concentrates, and that they take a, a little longer to get into the system, which yes. can can pose. Um, more serious risk too because kids might ingest more than they intend to and cause uh, a higher potency or a higher a, a more intense high that maybe yes. could have more severe reactions yes and if it's if it, the edible is actually sold in a dispensary it identifies the recommended usage mm -hmm. um, for that individual the expected user to use and a lot of times it's very small minor um or a small portion of it. Mm -hmm. And like anything, it has, our body breaks down stuff. So if you ingest it, it just takes a while to get to the brain and to the bloodstream and just through there. So it just takes longer to feel the effects. So they recommend taking a small amount of the respective doses and it takes a while because it has to go through down the digestive, the breakdown process of it. But a lot of people um, or a lot of users and, and you know, first time users will take a bite and be five, 10 minutes, oh, I'm not high yet. Because mm -hmm. typically if you ingest through smoking it, you get high relatively quickly. So they wait five minutes and like, I'm not high, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat another piece. 10 minutes later, I'm not high. And then they're gonna be like, I'm gonna eat half the dang candy bar. Mm -hmm. Next thing they know, they realize they're, they're too high and that's when they start getting in trouble. So um, it's, it's very concerning and it's scary, but if you do see this and you're showing some 
uh, paranoia or freaking mm-hmm. out, uh, lack of a better word, freaking out, it, it could be because of cannabis. It really is. And I think that might be what we're seeing in the increase in ER visits when we see young people end up in the ER under the influence of marijuana are those higher levels, those higher potencies causing them to have hallucinations and paranoia. Absolutely. So touching based on some more sh- common street drug names, uh, you have the universal emojis that are mm-hmm. consistent with uh, just pretty much every drug. So the rocket emoji is universal for getting high, uh, indicating obviously someone getting high going upwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, the plug or electric plug um, is identified as a reference to a drug dealer or someone that has your drugs as you're wanting. So I need to talk to my plug or hey, I am the plug. So if you're seeing this on Snapchat or seeing this on Facebook and all you have is just that that plug outlet, they are identifying themselves as the dealer. Okay. Um, through the phone, uh, having the phone emoji or having the just like any type of communication emoji is hit me up, let me know, or I'm on deck are all common things from a, a dealer or their plug to, to reach out to people, letting them know that they have product for sale. Mm-hmm. So if you see on a Snapchat story and someone says LMK and that's all you see, it's let me know, I have the product ready for sale. Common text, hey, you want to match? Match is used in a, in a term that if for example, you have some marijuana, you have a gram of marijuana, and I have a gram of marijuana, let's match, and we'd both be able to get high, and we'd save some. So I'd put in 0.5, you put in 0.5, and we'd smoke and get high, but she matched mine, and you're able to save. So usually people or drug users, when they get together, they'll match whatever drug they have um, to save some, but in the same time, token, so they'll still be able to get high. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll match you. Yo, I'll match you after uh, UAG after work. Using match in that contents is just sharing or splitting it. And G is reference to to a gram. gram. Yep, good question, gram. All right, we know that kids are hiding drugs in a variety of places these days, and that looks different for every kid and for different substances depending on what they're using, I'm sure. Um, so some of the places that we're aware that kids are hiding drugs, vehicles is still one of the places that yep. we hear and see about, particularly when kids are at school. Um, backpacks, clothing, um, hats, belt buckles. We'll share some of those um, examples of some of the clothing that we, we see that have those stash compartments in them. School supplies, we, we highlighted that with the highlighters. Um, and, and some of the other um, school supplies out there, there's graphic calculators where there's compartments where kids might be hiding them. Um, the DEA is a resource for parents and educators that will uh, make sure that we share out in our, our resource page uh, regarding um, uh, resources that parents can tap into in terms of digging more, but it's a great place to go and and check out some of the different places where kids might be hiding drugs. They keep up on a lot of really great trends for parents, and it's it's getsmartaboutdrugs.gov. And so this is a great resource to tap into if you're wondering about specifically um, where kids might be hiding drugs. Um, candy containers and wrappers, there's just a lot of stash compartments that are out there that are available for purchase. Again, many of these products um, are available on online. Um, and we'll show, show some more of these moving forward as well. Um, personal hygiene items, makeup containers can be uh, a place where they might hide some substances, whether it's um, your marijuana or, or prescription pills or any other type of substance. Um, and then beverage bottles, cans, snack items can also be, be a place where we might see some of that. Paying attention to clothing brands is also a really good idea. Um, these are some of the brands that, that, that we're aware of that I know um, are more closely affiliated with stash compartments or stash pockets, if you will, yeah. where they might be hiding some of those substances. So Grassroots, Supra, No Bad Ideas are all brands that we might want to be aware of. Um, in terms of, of the Supra and the, the No Bad Ideas, they each have a, a symbol. Symbol. Um, that goes with them, um, and we will actually we have a hat that we're going to talk about here a little bit. So um, the no, this is the No Bad Ideas brand, um, but they're they're known for this little crown, um, and it looks like an average hat, no questions asked. But if you flip over the inside, um, there is a stash compartment, um, and it's a fairly big stash compartment um, that 
might be a place where, where some of those products might be um, hidden. And again, a hat in and of itself may not be a sign that your, your son or daughter is using substances, but we look at the bigger picture, right? Um, in terms of what else might be going on, what else are we seeing, are there behaviors that we're seeing that are raising red flags? And so if you have those behaviors in addition to some of these brands, it's probably worthy of just to ask some questions and to do some more checking. I want to point out that the, the common person says, well, why? what's the use of these stash compartments? What are they trying to hide it from? Yeah, they don't want to get in trouble from law enforcement or even parents, but a lot of people don't think that the, these drugs are being brought into schools. But if you think about it, you actually think about it, a lot of these kids, especially 16 or younger, don't have means of transportation to meet up like an older drug dealer to transport their mm -hmm. drugs. So where are they running into their clients, if you will? In between passing periods, in between the halls. So they're finding these stash compartments to bring the drugs into school so they could then sell them. So they're trying to do it as discreet as possible. Um, so that's why they're actually coming and creating these uh, compartments is not only just to store your drugs, but how to transport them so I could sell them. Right. And and I'll tell you, we purchased um, this particular hat online and, and really not outrageously priced compared to other hats that, that somebody might purchase. Um, so so price-wise, um, not they're not extremely high priced that a youth could not afford to purchase that or parents wouldn't balk at that and say, well, why do you want this expensive hat? Because it's just not very expensive. Um, these are just some other other um, stash compartments within hats. Grassroots. Grassroots, yes. Yeah. So grassroots is is pretty big. Um, it's also a hidden compartment, just like uh, no bad ideas. But grassroots actually. Uh, traditionally when it came out, the hidden compartment was always, always located near the emblem or the mm -hmm. symbol, uh, the grassroots, but now they've had to kind of switch things up because of trainings that respect to law enforcement officers attend, they have to move it. But I want to point out that if you're seeing these symbols or emblems on these clothing, if it's hats are the most common ones, but t-shirts, sweaters, um, start looking. There's probably going to be a hidden compartment within the respective item or article of clothing. Um, but grassroots is really big. They'll have different designs um, or in different styles, and some of them do look. You you see a, a Colorado bear, and it, for I guess on its face value, that's actually a pretty cool looking hat. But the intention there is to blend in with the public, but also provide a, a stash compartment where you could hide or consume or conceal rather uh, your 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 drugs. Right. So another item that's made from grassroots, or that's the product of grassroots, do you want to talk about this? Product? Yes, this is a sweater, um, or and it's a hooded sweater. It looks common, it looks normal. And a lot of people, when I gave this respect to training in the past, a lot of people picked up on, traditionally, the, the grassroots down at the bottom, is there's like a right. little emblem. Mm -hmm. that, that's where a lot of people thought the hidden compartment would be, or they told me, you know, uh, behind the pouch or in the pouch. But actually, the hidden compartment is where the bear is. The bear is actually a Velcro, Velcro bear, and you pull it off, it has about a one inch or to one and a half inch compartment where you could stuff in your paraphernalia, your, your drugs there, and then you put back on a uh, put back on the patch and it's concealed. And if you think about it, uh, a common person is not going to check where the around the chest area, especially right. for a female. We're not going to search around the, the chest area, but knowing and identifying it, and this is a common brand that we see that has a stash compartment associated with it, it just sends off that light bulb where we would then ask, hey, could you please take off the shirt or the sweatshirt um, so we could examine it further. So mm -hmm. as you mentioned, it's based on the totality of everything. Um, just seeing a respective brand in itself doesn't mean that um, your kid's associated with the drugs mm -hmm. or the drug market. It's just if you're seeing suspicious behavior, things start to change, the attitude starts to change, and mix in with these respective brands, then you should have a conversation or do some digging. Right, right. So this is a, a, a belt. Yes, and this is one thing I, I touch base on, especially with other law enforcement officers when I give res this respect to training, is you could hide drugs or conceal drugs anywhere, and it's uh, imperative we do a thorough search of them. So if you have anything. This is a common belt and inside the belt line is a zipper. So you just zip that up and you could hide anything there. You could put, you know, it could be used for common things too. Let's say you don't have pockets and you want to put your mm -hmm. keys or money there. You could definitely put that there. But uh, uh, I know a lot of officers and I imagine the common person or parent probably wouldn't check 
the belt line or try to have them remove the belt to see if there's a hidden compartment in the belt. So this just goes to show you that people are being creative, companies are being creative because it's, it's money driven. So if they could find a unique or a, kind of a, a new way to consume or conceal their, uh, their illegal items, mm -hmm. um, they will. Okay. So these are stash containers. Um, the stash containers come in all different yeah. product sizes, um, uh, products themselves. We see anything from snack containers to soda containers to WD energy 40. drinks, WD-40. We've seen um, deodorant containers that have a stash container in them. Um, so being aware that not everything is always as it seems uh, when, we're, when we're looking for uh, substances or for paraphernalia, if we're concerned about our son or daughter, sometimes we have to dig a little deeper. Do you want to yeah, expand so I, on that? I've actually seen some of these in, in vehicles before, a WD-40 in the trunk, common area where you would keep some of your other tools. Well, this kind of stood out in, in this vehicle that I searched was there was nothing other than a can of WD-40. There wasn't screwdrivers, there wasn't any other um, vehicle repair items. It was just WD-40 in the trunk and it kind of stood out to me. It was out of the ordinary. Um, another one I've seen in, in a regular cooler, they had other drinks in there, but this was the only lone Mountain Dew um, drink inside this cooler mixture, mix in with some other alcohol beverages. And I just said that, that stood out to me. That was, that was different. So if something stands out to you, or there's a drink that's not kept in a, your kid's refrigerator, and it's just sitting on their desk, or maybe in a closet, you don't keep a Coke or a, a bottle in a closet, or even Pringles. You don't keep these things in, in, in those type of places. So it should raise a flag and be like, huh, let me, let me, Look into this further and as i mentioned earlier manipulate these items mm -hmm. on, on, on its face value it looks consistent it looks just like a regular container but you start to touch it it's not going to be consistent with the normal item and then if you start trying to twisting and turning manipulating it um, there will be a um, some give or an opening mm -hmm. right and we should point out um, these soda cans the opening is at the top but they do have some some products where the opening is at the bottom and for for most products you're not going to be able to open the bottom yes. and have have something dispense from that yes. and so that would be another red flag i've also seen a water bottle one um, mm -hmm. just a regular water bottle and it opens up right in the middle but the thing is is um it kind of as i mentioned if you flip the water bottle up and down it should have a consistent flow to it this one if you flip up and down the bottom doesn't move because you don't have that that, that common flow to right. it it's a it's a false compartment as you mentioned earlier lipstick and you actually had one i went to a conference where um they actually had these as well but these these are two items i actually confiscated and um, they were actually made. So the chapstick one was homemade. They took out a chapstick and they funneled out the bottom of it mm -hmm. and just put it in a compartment where they could hide their drugs and then close it or seal it off. So if you're just doing a, a quick search of their pockets or asking them to empty their pocket, if the pieces aren't adding up, start mm -hmm. manipulating items. And that's what we're getting to because a lot of these devices, either pens, um, uh, highlighters, they, they will probably work like a lipstick. I don't believe this lipstick was actually functional, but some of these are going to the extent where they'll actually be able to use them, um, not for a long period of time, but just to test them, quick test them mm -hmm. real quick to kind of portray a real item. But when in fact they are, they are used to conceal certain um, paraphernalia drugs. Another thing that I found, um, this is you could buy this online. You could also buy these in multiple smoke shops here. Um, it's known as a blaze uh, hidden mm. compartment. It, it resembles like a real card. You have a real card on the right and then the blaze compartment on the left. And if you put it in a wallet, it blends in just like a credit card. Mm -hmm. So no one would be able to identify on his face, hey, oh, it's just a credit card. If you do, especially do a quick search, like, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't think twice about it, but if you pull it out, you could actually hide some stuff in there. Um, I don't know. It'll probably be stick out if you have a big flower tobacco. Mm -hmm. I mean, flower uh, cannabis. But if you have you know some pills or maybe even some harder drugs, methamphetamine or cocaine, um, you could fit quite a bit of in there and close that that credit card, the Blaze credit card package, and put it in your wallet and no one would. Yeah, even just know. a quick scan of it you probably wouldn't think twice about it and that's that's where I, I i keep hitting on if you're going to actually do a search and you're interested or suspicious or suspicion that something's going on do that due diligence and have a thorough search and make sure that you're checking everything just in case that um there's some stuff there right
Some additional items that we have found is actually this was confiscated. This is your just your regular inhaler, mm -hmm. and that they turned into a marijuana pipe. They moved the top in it. You put your flower, your marijuana on top of it, your bud, as the the common person identifies it as, and then you remove the the bottom piece of the inhaler and smoke it as a, just a regular basic pipe. So this was homemade. This was homemade. It was homemade. It was not by the store. Mm -hmm. So people you got some innovative individuals out there that don't want to be caught and mm -hmm. so they, that is a homemade um, marijuana pipe that looks like a regular inhaler. Right. Another thing is this, uh, the booze um, smuggle containers mm. came out for concerts. You can't bring your drinks in the concert for obvious reasons but people would, um, it's posing as a tampon and if you do a quick search inside a female's purse, a common person is not going to be like, oh let me you know, open up a tampon and look further into it but you could consume alcoholic beverages in there or even drugs in there so a lot of them will uh a lot of t common tampons will have the brand name associated with it but this one just says tampon on it so um like i said if you're going to do the search and go through the effort do a thorough search and make sure the things that are trying to be passed off as the item is in fact the real item and it's not a compartment to store stuff right Smell safes are something that, that we have seen as well. You can purchase them online. They're exactly what they say. It's a smell safe. It's intended to disguise the smell most often, I would assume, of marijuana. Um, but a lot of times they just look like a normal case. This looks a little bit like a, a wallet or a billfold or a zip-up case. This reminds me of a pencil case of some sort or a school case. Um, so um, maneuvering them, as you said, opening, playing around with them is a really good option if you come across something like that that you think well i don't remember my son or daughter having this before what what else could this be used for do you want to talk about the calculator yeah. this is interesting yeah so this uh this is an app a common app you could download on your or download on your samsung or android mm -hmm. or um, apple device and a lot of teens are using this to store or hide stuff uh, more commonly photographs or, Im or videos people will uh, hide. So this is an app you could download and on its face it looks like a calculator. It's just, it's just a random calculator but you're actually going to type in your respective digits as your password and then it opens up a vault. A vault that you could store stuff that you don't want other people to see. It could be anything um, that you want on your phone but uh, common parents and even law enforcement officers don't know this exists but um, there's no reason, I don't know, I use my calculator on my phone, let's, let's be honest. Our phones are our new computers um, or our new calculators, but how common does people have two calculators on their phone? Not very common. So if you've seen two calculator apps on your phone, chances are one of them is probably going to be a hidden, uh, hidden calculator, hidden vault. And how do, we, how do you say, how do you identify this? I'll show you. So there's a calculator on the bottom. It just looks like a regular calculator, but this one actually has a plus sign next to it, which is indicating it's a vault. Mm -hmm. So there's just a little plus sign at the, at the bottom of it. They have certain uh, apps have um, it, are evolved and they've got rid of that because they're trying to um, be discreet or disguise it from law enforcement and even parents. So they have got some apps have gotten rid of the plus sign, but the best practice on how to actually identify what the app's intentions are or the purposes is to, if you would, mm -hmm. is to just go to the, the store, the app location. So for Apple, you're going to open up the app store, select on the profile icon, and then choose a select purchase. Once you click the purchase button, it'll show you a list of all apps on your respective iPhone, and it'll give you a rundown of what that app is supposed to do. Any app. So you could try it right now, you could try it at home, and it will give you a brief detailed description of what the app's intended use is for. If you have an Android, you're going to open up the Google Play Store, select on the menu icon, which is your name up in the corner, um, so pretty much your Google account. You're going to click on that and then go to My Apps and Games. Um, once you click on My Apps and Games, you'll have a rundown or a list of all apps that you have on that whole device, and then you're going to start clicking on them. If you, you're, you'd be amazed on how many apps you even have on your phone that you're like, oh, I downloaded that one time. Mm -hmm. I forgot even what it is. Mm -hmm. You click on it, it'll give you a brief rundown or a, um, a detail of what it is, and it'll identify on there right there that it's meant to hide something or, or store, store videos or images. So if you see that, you got to start asking questions with that being said it doesn't that doesn't give you the 
ability to get into the respective app. But if your child or your students have those hidden apps, you should probably have a conversation and get to the bottom of why, um, why are they trying to hide stuff. So this walks through a, a little bit more on how to find that hidden app. Yep, pretty much what I mentioned, it allows you to view the apps and respective apps, and then you just click on the apps, each individual app, it'll show you the icon next to it, you just click on them, and it'll give you a rundown of what the app's intended purpose. Now that we've discussed hidden compartments and various substance of use that kids are using, let's talk about what it might look like if a student or a young person is under the influence of substances. Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, um, myself being a drug recognition expert, we are trained um, and been through hundreds of hours of training to identify if a respective individual is under an influence of a controlled substance. And we identify into seven different drug categories. One of the drug categories is known as cannabis or is cannabis. And some of the things that we go through our 12 step process is we touch base on these following areas, uh, general indicators, as we identify them, uh, or clinical indicators and general indicators, and to identify if the individual or respective user is exhibiting or showing these signs and mm -hmm. symptoms. So pupil size, just talking with individuals and looking at them, uh, cannabis typically usually will have a dilated pupil. With that being said, your pupil size could be possibly normal, mm -hmm. but dilated pupils is one of the uh, signs of cannabis consumption. Uh, pulse rate is going to be elevated and a lot of people think that if they consume marijuana they're going to be you know high and like sluggish and, sl and like kind of slow calm but it actually has a complete opposite um, a good analogy would be a, a duck a duck on water moves really really slow but if you look underneath the water their legs are moving a thousand miles per hour and that's how an individual under the influence of cannabis is operating it may look like they're just moving really slow but their internal organs are sped up and it's actually working twice as hard so you have the pulse rate elevated you have the blood pressure is elevated and the body temperature is going to be normal and the muscle tone will be normal. The reason why we identify muscle tone is because certain respective drug categories will show rigid. So like someone just got done working out, mm -hmm. really um, tough uh, muscle tone, and also some will be flaccid, um, really um, flaccid. So with cannabis, it's, it's going to show uh, uh, usually uh, normal muscle tone. Okay. Other general indicators that we look for uh, for someone under the influence of cannabis, the most common one is short-term memory loss. Mm -hmm. So if you're having these conversations with them and you talk to them, ask them questions, it's good to have a follow-up question, that exact same question a short time later, um, because the chances are they won't remember what you said. Um, or I've seen in, during the course of my contact with people on the street, they'd be looking for an item and they can't find it and the item is in their hand or in their pocket. They just cannot remember um, what um, you know, or where they put it or what they're looking mm -hmm. for. Eyelid tremors is really common. So uh, when they close their eyes, their eyelids would will have a tremor or movement effect. Body tremors is also, I would pretty much um, identify it as a shaking of the body, a tremor of a body. Um, bloodshot watery eyes mm -hmm. is very common as well. Uh, impaired perception, uh, perception of time and distance. So they'll have a slowed internal clock. And what I mean by that is if you ask them how long time has passed or how long they thought maybe something has, has gone by, um, they would believe that, for example, we give them a test and I ask them to tell me the passing of 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And when they feel that 30 seconds has passed, I need them to tell me. And there's been times where um, people would tell me over a minute, they would tell me stop. And I say, how long is that? And they say 30 seconds. And then what in fact has truly been a minute. So that's what I'm meaning by uh, um, uh, impaired perception of time and distance is just their internal clock is slowed down. And then lack of, lack of concentration. And then another one is a lot of these ones, the most common way to consume cannabis mm -hmm. is obviously smoking it, mm -hmm. um, so ingesting it. So you're gonna have uh, the marijuana debris in the mouth, especially mm -hmm. if it's from a mm -hmm. pipe. But as we mentioned, the heat source to these are, are really hot. So it's, uh, if they're smoking through a pipe or the one hitters uh, that you had, they're gonna burn their taste buds and you'll have raised and burnt taste buds in the back as I identified here, is because of cigarettes have filters. So you're gonna have mm -hmm. to, to reduce the heat. But these pipes, there's no filter to a mm -hmm. pipe. So they're just smoking the pure heat going through the, the product. And then you'll also have a coating on the tongue as shown here. And that's of the, the product, the 
cannabis flower, the bud, um, it'll show the coating on the tongue. Not always, but sometimes, and you'll really have a dry mouth. So Now, how long after use would you see something like this? So it, there's variations due to if they eat in something or if they drink stuff. Mm -hmm. um, generally, a couple hours afterwards, mm -hmm. you'll see it. It could last up to 24 hours. Some of these indicators could last that long. Um, but I'd say that uh, typically a um, couple hours, especially if they just consume, their peak effects are right there. Mm -hmm. But it could last up to 24 hours. You could still be showing signs and symptoms of cannabis consumption. Okay. With that being said, we have identified how you could see the signs and symptoms if an individual is under the influence of a respected mm -hmm. drug category. We at the Lincoln Police Department and the Lancaster County Sheriff's Office have 13 certified drug recognition experts in the state. So there's a lot of resources here within our, um, our respective community. We also have 46 certified A-Ride officers that have gone through similar training as a drug recognition expert, but not as much training, but still have enough adequate training to identify if a person's under the influence of controlled substance. So out of 360, about uh, 350 officers, mm -hmm. we have 46 of them. Um, some of them are school resource officers, but they all work various different shifts. So if you are seeing this inside schools or if you are seeing this at home and you have questions or saying, I don't feel confident, even with this presentation and information we were providing today, if you guys at home or especially in the school districts don't feel comfortable um, being able to identify if a student or a child is under the influence of a controlled substance or even any drug, I strongly encourage you to reach out to one of us officers, either DREs or A-RIDES. The way you could get in contact with them is school resource officers. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, some school resource officers have been through A-RIDE training, so they know what to look for. But if there is not one available, the school resource officer will reach out to an officer on duty that has been through a ride or even been uh, or a DRE certified. I've done numerous uh, once throughout my career, either met with juvenile probation or even in the schools where I've been called and said, hey, could you take a look at the student and see if he or she is under the influence of controlled substance? And unfortunately, the, I have determined based on my training experience that the individual is under the influence and I identify the respective drug category. So this is a, a valuable resource and a tool, and I know a lot of people don't know it's out there, so I encourage you guys to reach out to either LPD or LSO or touch base with a school resource officer to have us come or one of us come and assist in the process. I think that's a great point. You know, when we talk about substance use prevention, it is a community's role in helping to keep our kids safe and healthy and to help keep them away from drugs and alcohol. So relying on our community resources, our officers who are trained in identifying some of this is a really great resource um, for our schools to tap into. Um, even parents who may have questions, are they able to make a phone call or tap into any of those resources? Or do you have some suggestions of who they might turn to? Yeah, absolutely. I've. Uh... I've definitely um, been called to a house before to make contact with a, a parent that believes that their kid has been smoking. We've also been uh, sent to um, houses to do help search of a kid's bedroom. Says, hey, you know, I found this paraphernalia inside of my son's bedroom. Could you tell me what it is? Um, us in law enforcement wear so many different hats. We do so many different jobs. So don't feel that, oh, this may not be a police matter or um, give us a call. We're here to help. So we are definitely able and willing to help. Um, especially if you believe something like this is going on in your student's life or your child's life, please don't hesitate to reach out to us because that's why we're here. We're here to help and also just protect them as well. Great. We'll end with just a little bit of a conversation about the importance of prevention. And, and we talked briefly about the role of our community members and our community agencies and law enforcement in those prevention efforts. Um, but really being mindful of the role that parents, schools, and our community plays together. And as parents, we can't always do it all on our own, and we don't always have the information to do it all on our own. And so really relying on our schools. Um, many of our schools have school community intervention and SKIP, which is a great resource to tap into if you are worried that your, your child or your son or daughter or a friend um, of your son and daughter may be engaging in some of these behaviors um, with the goal of intervening early. Uh, with the goal of preventing kids from ending up with a substance use addiction. Um, we don't 
nobody expects kids to be perfect and, and they may fall down sometimes, but we want to help them to get back up and, and to straighten that path out. And we can do that for through prevention. Um, some really important strategies, I think, for, for parents is to communicate your expectations around substance use and drugs and alcohol and, and making sure that our, our kids are aware of what are our expectations when it comes to drinking and drug use. And if we have consequences, enforcing those consequences. Um, being mindful, however, that with consequences and rules comes a balance of love and communication and honesty and trust because we also want our kids to come to us um, and talk to us when they may have uh, a worry or a concern, particularly around substance use, and not feel that they're worried they can't come to us for fear of those rules or those consequences. So that balance, I think, is really important. Um, engaging in those conversations, we know that uh, kids who engage in conversations with their parents early and often uh, are 50% more, less likely to use drugs or alcohol than the kids that don't have those conversations. So just having a conversation is a huge uh, benefit to keeping our kids safe and healthy. Um, really providing our teens with positive reinforcement. Our kids need to hear that uh, they're worthy and that they are capable and that they can make good choices and decisions that are going to benefit their futures and their lives. And uh, it's, it's our role as adults in their lives and youth advocates or teachers or law enforcement or parents to really help kids build that self-esteem because we know that that self-esteem and confidence is so huge in preventing substance use. So helping our kids to find those activities and outlets that can keep them safe and maybe away from turning to substances, um, whether that be extracurricular activities, getting involved in their community, um, getting involved in their school can go a really long way. For parents, for educators, for our youth advocates, if there's additional information that you feel that you need, um, maybe you want to dig a little bit deeper on any one of these topics that we've covered, whether it's where kids might be hiding drugs or substances of, of, of use or even prevention efforts, tap into our resources. This, this resource page offers a number of great resources. It will be on our landing page, talkhearttoheart.org. That's talkheart2heart.org. I would encourage you to check these out. As a parent myself, I use these resources, and you can never learn too much, right? So that's always important for us to, to get extra education um, and, and to utilize the resources that are available to us. I want to thank Officer Connor for being here, um, providing your, your expertise and knowledge. I think it's immensely helpful and beneficial to, to parents, to school staff, and, and to anybody else who hopefully is, was able to check in and, and listen. Thank you, Abby. Thank I you. enjoyed my time. I was anytime happy to help. Great. Thank you. Thank you.